this is what I'm doing for myself. Why don't you come do this too? And so again, some of my patients, 50 year old, 60, 70 year olds with medical problems, they're not so excited about coming drop into this exercise class that they see me doing because they know I've done Ironmans and like, yeah, doc, sure. you can do that. I can't do what you're doing. You're, you're crazy. I'm not going to do that thing. Mm-hmm. So it took a little talking and explaining and, and there's been some uh, air squats and deadlifts done in the exam room. Hello, and welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm Dr. Julie Fouché, family physician and former CrossFit Games athlete. Here, I bring you information and inspiration to help bridge the gap between fitness and medicine and support your journey toward your healthiest self. I'm wishing you all a very happy new year. I hope you enjoyed a wonderful holiday season and are looking forward to a great year in 2022. As we move into this new year, I want to alert you to a change for Pursuing Health. Over the past year and a half, I've been posting weekly podcast episodes, and it's been great to be able to share so many more stories and perspectives with you. However, as we move forward in 2022, I'm going to go back to posting a new episode every other week. This will allow me to focus on improving episode quality and devote the time I would like to other areas too. So I appreciate all of your ongoing support, and I hope you'll continue to enjoy Pursuing Health episodes every other week moving forward. Here, I share a conversation with fellow family physician, Dr. Jeffrey Meyer, who's a small town primary care doctor using CrossFit to transform his life and the lives of his patients. A little background on Dr. Meyer before we dive in. He completed his medical training at Louisiana State University. And in addition to his private family practice with MDVIP, he's a medical director of a local nursing home and a local home health. He volunteers as the team physician for his former high school and as an adjunct clinical professor for Tulane Medical School. He's a fellow of the American Academy of Family Physicians, a board member and former president of the Louisiana Geriatric Society, member of the Society for Post-Acute and Long-Term Care Medicine, a member of the American Academy of Sports Medicine, and of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. After he used CrossFit to transform his own life and health, Dr. Meyer became a CrossFit Level 1 trainer and developed a pilot program within his local affiliate, CrossFit Acadiana, and he recruited 12 senior patients considered medically sick with multiple comorbid conditions, with the goal of improving their health through lifestyle, nutrition, and exercise. Here we talk all about Dr. Meyer's own journey with CrossFit and how it's inspired him to use CrossFit to enhance the lives of his patients, some of the results that they've seen, and his vision for primary care of the future. I hope you enjoy. Now, before we dive in, I do want to make it clear that this podcast is for general information only and does not provide medical advice. I recommend that you seek assistance from your personal physician for any health conditions or concerns. So with that, let's get to the episode. Welcome to First Sitting Health. I'm here with Dr. Jeff Meyer, who is a family physician and also leads classes, CrossFit classes for um, some of his patients. And I'm excited to be able to share more of your story here with our audience. So thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Be <laughs> I thought we could start off with um, what led you into family medicine. So maybe how you got into medicine in the first place and then why family medicine and why do you do love doing primary care? Yeah, I guess. Uh, so healthcare was probably always a, a thought in my head. I think pretty far back, maybe elementary school. I remember writing like a little, little paper about uh, becoming a radiologist. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so the idea of being in medicine w- was probably always there. And, and at least part of this is probably because my father mm-hmm. is a family practice physician Okay. So I guess I kind of grew up seeing it at least a little bit and he, he tried pretty hard not to bring his work home. So he didn't really <laughs> talk about it a lot, but I, I knew it was there. I'm curious and about the radiologist dream. Where did that come from? I, I, I don't really know. I think maybe my, my mother might've been pregnant at the time. And I remember seeing some ultrasound pictures, so I think okay. there was an ultrasound picture on that report. And, yeah. uh, I, I want to say my teacher argued with me that it was not radiology because it wasn't an x-ray. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that was that was a few years ago. Uh, so at some point, so then I end up in in uh, college, and my my initial degree was uh, going to be pre med. I did that for about one semester, and it didn't really appeal so much to me. Uh, changed my degree to marine biology, which which I really enjoyed. That was pretty interesting. And then when it was getting close to graduation. I still kind of had that uh, medicine bug. So my plan was to take the MCAT and kind of stress-free 
Mm-hmm. And see how it went. And if the score was okay, I would try to go to medical school. And if the score was bad, then I was going to try for grad school. All right. And so the score was okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I applied to med school and, and next thing you know, I'm up there. Uh, and then, then once I was in, uh, you know, I'm probably like most, most students, your first year or two, you're just doing all the academics kind of mm-hmm. can't really make up your mind now. When I was there, I was at LSU Shreveport and they had a new program at the time. Their family medicine block was not a block. It was a four-year rotation. Oh, wow. And they made us do a comprehensive care clinic. So starting our first year, they assigned us patients and a half day, once a week, we followed those patients for four years. That is awesome. But no matter what rotation we were on, we were excused for a half day to go check on these people. So we got some of that longevity that we'll mm-hmm. see in medicine. So that probably started me thinking about it a little more. And, and even then uh, with my, my sports background, I was, you know, thought about Arthur, like probably everybody mm-hmm. else. And my first rotation was OBGYN and that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Start delivering some babies and everybody's <laughs> happy. And after two years of staring at books, you're, you're doing a procedure and, and everybody's <laughs> smiling and this was great. So I thought about OB and we kind of went from one rotation to another and everything was kind of fun. Yeah. So then you start looking at uh, what can I, where can I do a little bit of everything? And then you end up in family medicine. Family medicine. There you go. <laughs> no major surgeries though. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, you said you had thought about ortho because of your sports background. What, what was your sports background growing up? Right. So uh, again, probably a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as, I mean, I think as far back as elementary school, first grade, I was running races, doing cross country or distance running. I remember going to some track meets, uh, elementary school it was a pretty, pretty skinny really until, <laughs> uh, I might've broke over a hundred pounds by the time I got to high school. <laughs> uh, so then, and I was at a small private school just running, thought I was okay. And I got to a very large public school found out I wasn't as fast as I might have thought I was different story uh so I was still doing the running and then I made some friends on my cross-country team and and they were pumping up swim team and how much fun that was so then I ended up joining a swim team that summer and some other friends mentioned a wrestling team so then I joined the wrestling team and so I rotated through all these sports in high school and never really settled on one sport all year round so I would kind of you know, one sport to another. And then in the summer, uh, we had a really one of the probably top 10 health clubs in the country in our town. It's, it's just acres of health club mm-hmm. place, uh, reds. So we would go work out there all summer. So then I was lifting weights. So as long as the sport did not involve any ball, <laughs> no coordination. Then if, if we just go like track, swimming, wrestling, weightlifting, you go till it hurts. I, I, I was okay with that. Those I am fun. with you on that one. I am not coordinated with a ball whatsoever. It was my wrestling coach would let us attempt to cut weight playing basketball. And I would beg him <laughs> if I could just run laps. <laughs> uh, probably the only one. So, so yeah, so I was doing all these sports. And then uh, when I went away to college, no collegiate sports for me, uh, more just studying, but I still kept up uh, with working out. And I guess at some point, probably my sophomore year of high school, I discovered triathlons. So I did those a little in high school. Then when you come out into college, I didn't have any organized sports. So I started doing more triathlons, kind of kept that up, uh, continued to do that in medical school. They had a pretty good cycling group up in Shreveport that I got connected with. So my, my bike riding improved up there. Mm -hmm. Uh, my senior year, I actually qualified for this off-road world championship. So, uh, I went and did that in Maui. Wow. Um, Oh, that sounds awesome. So so back then to qualify required very little, just kind of had to finish a qualifier race and you're in, (laughs) I'm going to go do this because one day this is going to be like Ironman Hawaii, where you have to actually be really fast to qualify. <laughs> and, and sure enough, these ex Terra championships now, I, I, there's no way I'd qualify, but. <laughs> but you got to go to Maui. That's awesome. Well, in 99, I borrowed some money and made it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my background was all these endurance sports. And then uh, I guess when I got back to my hometown for residency, 
uh, and then private practice somehow I managed to find a little more time and was able to start training for the longer races, started doing my Ironman triathlons, did that for a little while. And then, uh, then work got busier and Mm -hmm. the, the long races weren't happening, became, uh, shorter races, just kind of winging it. Yeah. And then, uh, then there was almost a period of almost no exercise. Then I changed my practice, went to this, this model I'm doing now, this, kind of sort of concierge, like Mm -hmm. got some more free time. Uh, Still didn't quite have the spark back. I like my triathlons, but it wasn't, it just wasn't as entertaining as it had been, I guess. Okay. A little different. I needed a change. Mm -hmm. So then I finally found a CrossFit and then uh, that was about three years ago. And yeah, that's been a whole different world. And that's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. How did you find it? How did you hear about it first? Yeah, so I guess I had heard some hints about it from one of the owners of our local gym. He was a marketing rep for a local uh, psychiatric hospital. So he kind of told me about it. Oh, and huh. he wrestled in high school. I wrestled in high school. So kind of connected there and mm-hmm. talked about it a little bit. But his gym was across town and the times never worked out. So it just, just wasn't happening. Mm-hmm. And then uh, one of my children uh, joined his gym. This is a couple of years later. And so he's working out at the gym and then I find out he's working at the gym that I, I know the guy. Okay. And he's telling me all about this CrossFit stuff. So then again, I'm kind of like, man, I really need to go try this one day. I don't know how this is going to work. And then they opened up a second lo- location in my hometown Okay. Where, where I'm working. So literally a mile from my office, like, okay, no this is it. <laughs> I have to do this. And then, and then there was a starter first 50 people to sign up, get a lifetime, like $95 a month rate. All right. Okay. I, I really have to go try this now. And this <laughs> is going to be like a boot camp thing. So we started out pretty bare bones, empty warehouse, yeah. a lot of body weight stuff. Uh, and yeah, then I was hooked. It was fun. That's great. Good so cool to start like, like at the grassroots of that affiliate too, and be able to see it grow as one of the initial members. What, uh, what impact have you noticed CrossFit has had on you personally? Um, I guess in any, in any way, whether it's your triathlons or in other ways. So it's, it's changed uh, a few things. I mean, so everybody in my life now has to hear about CrossFit. <laughs> That's probably the most important one. Of the, <laughs> one requisite is what they told me. <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, but no, I actually, again, because of my practice, I did a lot of these uh, biometric measurements on myself when I started CrossFit because I wanted to see. Yep. You know, I'd heard stories from, from way back in the day about how terrible CrossFit was and how it was going to tear my arms out of socket and do all these bad things to me. Mm-hmm. And, and I've been doing all these endurance sports and I thought I was in reasonable shape. I knew it wasn't where I was 10 years ago, but mm-hmm. okay. So I do all these biometrics on myself, like a body fat analysis and all, and just kind of followed them as I did my first year of CrossFit and I think within six months, my body fat percent had dropped 4%. Wow. And my total body weight did not change. That's so a lot was, of lean mass. Right. I was very happy. Like, so I've lost about four or five pounds of body fat and gained a few pounds of muscle. So this was. It's a good thing. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and my lab was looking better. It's still not all perfect because my diet's not perfect, but. Mm-hmm my inflammation markers are down, my cholesterol is improved, my, my triglycerides are improved. So, so if outward physically, things are better. Mm-hmm. Inward, my lab was better. And, and then I guess my, my lifestyle was better, right? So now I'm smiling a little more, I'm a little happier. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm recruiting people to come to the gym to exercise with me. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully it's affected some other people, but, but yeah, it, just socially my, my life is getting, I'm getting my life back. Things are feeling better. And, and some of that is just organization of CrossFit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you said you, uh, you know, it's affected other people in your life and I know it's affected some of your patients too, because you've um, talked to your patients about it and you have some that are now going to the gym. Can you talk about what that process has been like for you? Just bringing it up with patients and how they have received it. Sure. So, so yeah, personally, 
besides me, I've now, uh, and, and my stepson who was doing it already, I've now roped my wife in at least somewhat. <laughs> um, and I got my mom doing it. And at one point, one of my daughters was there. Oh. Uh, my 12 year old is now comes and goes from the gym, you know, when it's convenient. Sure. <laughs> Tear them off the video games. Uh, so yeah, lot, lots of people have been dragged in. Uh, and then several of my wife's family members, uh, which is kind of how it started. I guess some, some of these patients were patients slash family members. And, and some of my patients who are not in the family, it, it almost feels that way because my, my office practice is so small. Mm-hmm. I have this small number of people. So they come in and we're running. I'm, I ran the same biomarkers on myself that we run on them. Mm-hmm. So they're coming in and I, I see like, man, your, your, your lab works off. Your, your body fat is not great. You're mm-hmm. losing muscle mass. Look at this from last year to this year, you declined. What, what are we going to do about this? I'm like, I, I just did this thing. It helped me. This yeah. is, this is what I'm doing for myself. Why don't you come do this too? Uh, and so, you know, again, some of my patients, 50 year old, 60, 70 year olds with medical problems, they're not so excited about coming drop into this exercise class that they see me doing because they know I've done Ironmans and like, yeah, doc, sure. you can do that. I can't do what you're doing. You're, you're crazy. I'm not going to do that thing. Mm-hmm. So it, it took a little talking and explaining and, and there's been some uh, air squats and deadlifts done in the exam room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're looking up videos now, now with the computer in every room, I'm pulling up videos and showing them, look, this, this is what we're doing in our class. Sure. Uh, so then I talked with the owner of our gym, mm-hmm. who's an occupational therapist, and we kind of started building out a class that would be tailored to these people mm-hmm. to, to try to get them in there without feeling intimidated and get them moving. And uh, that, then once we had that, then, then they were a lot more accepting and it was a lot easier to get some people into the gym. Um, That's so interesting. Cause I'm often thinking about what are, what are the biggest obstacles to people walking into the gym? And so you found that just by having a specific class with other people that are in a similar health situation that has that has helped make it easier for people to, to be open to it. It has. And, and it's funny. Uh, and, and I guess what, so when I found out they had the uh, CrossFit MD class mm-hmm. and, and at the time the fee was waived, I was like, well, I, I should definitely, why wouldn't I do this? Yeah. I do this now COVID hit. So I had to do mine online, which was a mixed thing. So it was a sure. good class and it was nice that I didn't have to travel a lot. That would have been hard for work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like some things better in person, but so I do this class and I find out, man, whoever wrote this CrossFit manual, this, this is kind of spot on. Like <laughs> there was a lot of things in there that, that right. it kind of makes sense. And, and then it escalated. I took the master class uh-huh. and I was reading about these masters athletes. And then we start coaching the class. I'm like, again, this is really more in tune than I expected. Like mm-hmm. they were they were very right. Uh, so, so it's kind of funny if you, if you follow those courses and read them, there are a lot of things, you know, they have this, the similar need of a, of a varying degree. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're seeing that. Uh, and, and the, and the classes are very similar. Like, I mean, when I'm up there coaching them, they are talking and not paying attention, just like the class with the 25 year old. Totally. <laughs> it's the same thing. Now the conversation might be a different, we, we might be a little more focused on grandkids, <laughs> but it, it's, yeah. And, and they're there early. They're taking out all their equipment before we've gone over the workout. It, it's kind uh-huh. of funny. That's um, great. That's yeah, great. It, so, so, but I do think for, for that master's group, one of their fears, especially the group I was targeting. So these are the, the people who have not been exercising, people who potentially have a medical problem. They, mm-hmm. some, some of these people have had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. They have COPD. You know, the, it's not going to be easy for them to walk into a class that's doing all these workouts, RX. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the master's manual is correct. It takes a lot more steps to explain some of these complicated movements. Mm-hmm. So, so when we all come in and start together and we go real slow, uh, yeah, they just accepted it so much more and, and then it becomes word of mouth. So now 
the people who have done it, they're, they're telling their kids and their grandkids, guess what I'm doing. Yeah. And they're, yeah, they're out there telling their buddies, same, same as what I did. Look how much fun I'm having and, and come on out. And, and I think it helped too. Interestingly, it helped that we did it during COVID mm. uh, for the mental side of this. Totally. So, so I think a lot of people were very isolated because of COVID. We're all quarantined. A lot of gyms were shut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were we were shut down for a little while, but we're able to reopen soon. And, and you know, we have these little squares marked off our little 10 foot squares. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the way CrossFit goes, we're pulling our own equipment out and we're going to use our our stuff and we're not going to really share. And then mm-hmm. when it's over, we're going to spray it down, pick it up. So a lot of these people who were very concerned about catching COVID felt safer coming to our gym than maybe a traditional gym where you, the people are rotating through one piece of equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this got them out and then they were social and then they saw their peers and their friends and everybody's talking and cutting up again. Yeah. After we've all been locked up in our house for six months. Uh, so yeah, mentally it, w- it was, it was great. They loved it. That's awesome. And so great how it's true, you know, how COVID really put a microscope on that, that isolation piece, but it's something that, especially as people get older, you know, isolation and just having community and social engagement is something that's harder and harder to do. So that's, that's amazing to see that you were able to see benefits from it, especially during COVID. Yeah, we, we measured when I, so when we did the, the way we set this up our we did a 12 week initial class, mm-hmm. kind of try it. And uh, for those 12 weeks, I measured the same. I did a body fat analysis. Uh, I did a Beck anxiety index and a PHQ nine on all these mm-hmm. people before class. Okay. And then we had four measures of fitness we did. So everyone got a sub max deadlift who kind of went for about an eight out of 10 effort. Okay. Uh, everyone did a chair to stand test, 30 okay. second reps. Everyone did a hand grip test and we did a six minute walk test. All right. And we picked these because most of these, as you know, I'm sure is they're in medical literature, right? Mm-hmm. So, so people are doing this test for frailty and, and everything. And, and I have all this geriatric stuff I do on the side. So all mm-hmm. this interesting to me to bring it all together. So we do the 12 weeks of classes and then I tested them all again. Mm-hmm. And I uh, yeah, the, the two people who had bad mental scores for the, the anxiety and the depression, their scores were significantly improved. All right. Like much better after 12 weeks, 100% of the people in the class improved all of their physical measures. Everyone deadlifted more. Everyone's hand grip improved. Everyone's six minute walk test improved. Everyone's squat improved. And we didn't really train, we didn't design the program to improve those tests. We just did CrossFit. Right. It, it wasn't specifically meant for those particular measures and, and they right. all improved anyway. It would be fascinating. I'm sure my hypothesis would be, even if you had a program where they were specifically doing those four tests, they would probably, I would expect they would still see more improvement doing CrossFit just because they're doing more functional movement and probably building more more strength, but that's amazing. How many people were part of this program? And did you have anybody who um, dropped out or did they all stay through the whole 12 weeks? I think we started, I have to go back and check. So I think it was 12 that initially started and we had two that dropped out pretty early, uh, but they dropped out for uh, social reasons. One dropped out to go see her great grandchild being born in California. <laughs> and another one dropped out because she was bringing her grandson to school every day. And and it didn't work it. at the time of our class. Mm-hmm. So, so the two dropouts were not for, it didn't really have to do with CrossFit so much as the, it was the time and location thing. It just didn't work. Yeah, yeah for sure. Everyone else finished it. Um, of the ones who finished it, when the 12 weeks was over, uh all but one of them had to go back to work and another one uh, injured his back trying to take down a tree after a hurricane, I think. Gosh. And except those two people, everyone else really wanted to keep going. So we, our gym created a master class for them that is still going on now. So we're, January will be our one year mark. And I told them all, we're going to get, te- we're going to test you again to see where you are one year out. Oh, that's great. That's great. So they're all still going. That's amazing. Have there been any um, unexpected challenges that have come up 
as you've gone through this class, things that you didn't expect would be obstacles that you've had to work through? Uh, I mean, so, so it's, I don't know if it'd be unexpected if you really thought about it, but so, so some of the people come up with medical things that were not necessarily related to CrossFit, but still going to have, you know, one person had a kidney stone, so then he's missing a mm -hmm. couple of weeks. Uh, we had everyone was monitored with a heart rate monitored during class, one of the, the my zones, so we could mm -hmm. see it on the screen. And we've had a couple people with some heart rate issues. So, you know, one person couldn't get their heart rate up because they were on a beta blocker. Mm -hmm. So then we did an adjustment with their cardiologist approval and dosed the beta blocker right after class rather than right before. So now her heart rate can get up a little more. So she's getting a little more work in. So that's okay. her. still with no SVT. Uh, <laughs> that's good. And, and then, you know, we had another person, his heart rate was staying kind of elevated. So, so we've had a couple of medical things like that where, uh, and then we get it checked out and, and it's all worked out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, sort of a setback. And then sometimes we'll, we'll miss class, but it's, it's kind of the same thing that happens with our right. other classes. Yeah. People, life goes on. So they, they go see grandkids or we're going to travel or take care of a sick yeah. friend and and so they're out for a couple of weeks and then they come back and it's a rough week back. Yeah. Yeah. So for other thinking about other gyms that might want to implement a program like this, do you think that's possible? Do you think that you need to have a doctor teaching the class or a doctor involved or how do you see um, more CrossFit affiliates catering to this population? Yeah. I think that will depend, I guess, on, on the, your target population so so for sure there's no reason any gym in the country should be able to generally have an older population mm -hmm. and have a master class and there's no reason why you can't get a healthy 60 70 80 year old we, i mean we just had an 80 year old guy in our class and That's and great. he would complain he hasn't been working out he comes join our class he's like i'm so discouraged i, I like are you kidding like you're here you just you just <laughs> did four rounds of deadlifts <laughs> I know the 60 year old guy did five rounds, but come on, <laughs> where are your 80 year old friends? They aren't here. Right. Right. They're doing very well. So, so for those people, I, I think anyone, you know, with the master's training could, could easily do it. You just mm -hmm. take it slow. And, and then maybe because of my medical background with, with my nursing homes and all some of this, I take for granted, but you, you go slow, take it easy. You progress it slowly. Uh, yeah. I think, any gym could do it. Now, if we're talking about some of these people with past medical problems, mm -hmm. yeah, that might take a little more medical supervision. Um, but, I, but I think it can be done. And, mm -hmm. and this is where I would love to see some research done and, and you'll need research to prove it, but they have cardiac rehab. Mm -hmm. right? So and th these are well-defined things and, and uh, there's a Pritikin and an Ornish method and, and they get some royalties and they have it all set up how it has to be. And in my head, I, I, my hypothesis would be that CrossFit can do it. Mm -hmm. We can do it just as well, and we can do it for less money, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, um, I, I would join that hypothesis. <laughs> but, but right, but I'm just saying it, and someone's got, we have to prove we it. We have to do the research, yeah. It's not going to get covered. We have to prove it. So, so yeah, I think if you're taking someone with COPD or, or heart problems or yeah, then, then okay, then that would be better to have someone medical in there, mm -hmm. some kind of way supervising it. Uh, and and we're we're actually trying, we're trying to set up a, a round two of this and trying to make a little bit more of a manual and be a little more organized about it so that, you know, maybe a year from now, yeah, it'll be a little easier for us to tell other gyms, say that this is how we did it. You just follow this recipe and you can do it too. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, when you started the class, you had everybody that was brand new. Um, how many, you know, what were some of the challenges of that versus doing a, a traditional on-ramp or like one-on-one -on -one instruction first? Um, how did you approach, especially those first, you know, that first month or the first few classes with your patients? We just took it slow. Uh, what we wanted to do was make sure there was a functional benefit of this. So that way they would really 
be excited about it. And, and that, and that wasn't too hard. So our, our first week, mm-hmm. first three or four workouts, we just did squat. Like that's it. Kind of yeah. one movement. We're going to learn squat today. And then, so the workouts were built around that. And if we did other things in between like walking or something, it, it, it would be things that did not require a lot of instruction. Mm-hmm. One movement per week. So first mm-hmm. we're going to squat. Then we're going to practice maybe a deadlift. So now mm-hmm. we're picking up off the ground that was week two and and then week three might have been uh, a shoulder pr- i forget the order of them but it was mm-hmm. a squat a deadlift shoulder press mm-hmm. and then a burpee mm-hmm. and, and the reason for the burpee i know everyone loves so them. functional yeah yes <laughs> but I, I so we recently had a person uh within the last couple weeks he was so excited because he can get up off the ground without assistance now and he That's could amazing. not do that when he started our class that's life changing. Um, yeah, and and uh, my my own mother, so she she runs, but she didn't do very much strength training. And then my mm-hmm. father just got sick; he had to have a surgery, so he was pretty weak. He fell at home. She had to help pick him up. Mm. So she can do that now because she was taught how to deadlift. Yeah. And before that deadlift, she would have been scared. She would have hurt her back, and uh, and yeah. So she has the strength to do that now. That's amazing. Um, Go, Mom. <laughs> it's been some, uh, some interesting things. Yeah, she has a few good stories. She actually won a, she got third in a 10K for her age group, like her uh, 70 and over age group. All right. And and so so two people outran her, but then when they go to get the awards, they have to step up on the little boxes on the podium. <laughs> and it's kind of funny, the two ladies who outrun her did not look very excited about stepping up onto that box. They were very <laughs> nervous about their balance and holding on and they were kind of climbing up there and, and my mom who's been doing some box step ups stepped up there no, no problem, problem. You go, mom. <laughs> run you. Uh, that's great that's balanced right like she can run yeah. and she can get up on a box so so yeah i'm, I'm i got off track there with the uh, question but that's great that. that's great i'd also have to circle back to you mentioned earlier how you changed your practice and that's allowed you to do more of this with your patients. And I was wondering if you talk about sort of what your traditional practice was like and then how your practice is different now and how you feel like that's benefiting both you and your patients. So traditional practice is, is what most people have grown up seeing, right? You just my regular day, I'm family practice doctor. We're going to schedule a lot of people per day. I think, uh, what would my numbers? Maybe it took about 22 people per day for me to meet my overhead and break even. So mm-hmm. you're doing typical 10, 15 minute visits, trying to get people in as much as you can. Mm-hmm. And we're supposed to be doing all this preventative care and, and people are trying to get you to take care of multiple problems. Cause we're family practice. We're going to handle a little bit of lots of things, right? right. I talk about your cholesterol, your depression, maybe look at that mole. Yeah. Son's got a sore throat. Fine. Well, 15 minutes wasn't working. <laughs> it's not a lot of time. Yeah. And, and then we bring in all these electronic records. Uh, so now we have to click all these boxes and document all this extra stuff. And oh, this was a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then heaven forbid, you're trying to round in the hospital at the same time, like, like I was. Uh, so I just, it just wasn't working so well. Yeah. And, and a lot of it was just overhead. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're, we're charging people all this money. They're spending all this time in our waiting room, not seeing us to have me run in and be stressed and, and not so focused mm-hmm. and trying to take care of multiple things and not really helping them as much. Yeah. So then uh, some friends of mine were doing this other model. So, so the model I went with was this MDVIP and, and there's other models like it, but, but basically the idea is we're, we're going to, people are going to be paying a fee mm-hmm. out of pocket whether it's direct primary care or this. And now we're going to have a lot less patients. Mm-hmm. So the, the hard part about it was that not all my patients could do it. Mm-hmm. Some of whom wanted to do it and couldn't. That That's, that's not really hard at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that wasn't good. But the people who can now, I can spend an hour or two hours from my, my wellness appointment can take two hours. And so now when they come in and I tell them you need to diet and exercise, I can actually spend 30 minutes and give them some details. I can look up foods they want if they have specific questions about what they can or can't eat. 
Mm -hmm. uh, if, if we talk about exercise, we, we get into the details about what exactly does that mean? How, how many minutes of exercise a day do I want? Is it going to be cardio? Is it going to be weightlifting? What, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. And oh, well, I don't think I can do this. But, oh, okay. Well, let me show you a modification right now in the room. This is what you can do. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I'm doing more testing and I can explain more about the testing. And when people see these tests and, and the same exact thing happens to me. So I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing. I, I know right now my diet has been slipping a little and I have not gotten on the scale because when I get on the scale, it's going <laughs> to remind me I need to tighten up and, yeah. and then I get better. So th that's exactly what happens with some of my patients. But now I have a little more time mm -hmm. to explain it all. And, and they're happier. They don't have, I don't have a waiting room anymore. I, I got rid of it. So when, when we say nine o'clock, we see you at nine o'clock. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's really nice when people call and they say, Oh, I need to come in for a sore throat. And if, if I can tell them, well, come in today. And they're like, well, what do you mean today? <laughs> right now? I'm like, right. sure. Just walk on yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so some of those things are nice and, and it freed up my schedule. So I, I had my nurse join CrossFit. Oh, right? that's great. So, so I specifically block time three days a week. She's going to class and mm -hmm. sometimes that means I'm the nurse. Mm -hmm. because I'm in my office and she's not there and that's okay because I'm, she's going to go exercise. Yeah. And that's going to benefit everybody in the practice. Um, so we're, we're backing it up. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's been nice. So that, that helps relieve some stress and, and then you can feel good about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. That's so, amazing. So maybe I'm not helping as many people, but hopefully I'm doing more good for the ones I am helping mm -hmm. plan. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's, I think just the way you described it, I think is something that probably every primary care doctor can relate to and how frustrating it can be to, to want to help people and feel like you're sort of on this treadmill where you're doing everything you can, but you're not actually making a big difference. And so that trade-off between being able to have more quality time and be able to make a bigger impact really goes a long way, especially, you know, at least for those patients that you see. And I think it's also beautiful too, how you can see like the parallel in your own health. You said there was a time period where you didn't really have much time at all for exercise. And it was, you know, then you're not being the best you can be as a doctor or in any of the other roles that you play in your life. But then as you've changed both your practice model and been introduced to CrossFit, that has sort of permeated the way that you take care of your patients and has really benefited everybody. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it has. It's kind of a, uh, so, so part of it was, the, and, and I tracked my, my biometrics. So I know like yeah. when I changed my practice, I had some improvement. So just changing my practice and giving me a little more free time made some improvements in my, in my numbers and okay. my body fat and all. And, and then we were kind of stuck again. And then about a year later I started the CrossFit and then I had this other huge jump in all my numbers again. So, so I kind of have an idea of how much of it was from the practice change and how much of it was from, from the CrossFit. CrossFit. That's amazing. And so cool that you've been tracking those numbers for yourself and your patients too, because it really brings that when we talk about the sickness, wellness, fitness continuum at the CrossFit level one, it really brings that to life where it's our performance markers are really important and tell us a lot. Like you, you know, like you tracked with that group, but also the biomarkers, if we're looking at long-term health in our fitness over the course of our lives, those biomarkers are important also. Yeah. And I thought to a lot of my patients, and I, you know, we're, we're going to, I'm going to recommend you do all these things. We're going to talk about your diet change, your, your exercise, or maybe a prescription medicine that you're going to get, mm -hmm. but it, it's supposed to be helping you. So let's try it. This is what the studies say that it's going to help. Yeah but then let's check on this in three months or six months and see if it really did what we think. Yeah. You know, we, we told you to, to eat more fish or eat more vegetables. Fine. Then, then let's check your lab in three months and see, did that work? Mm -hmm. and, and if it did, then we're going to keep going. And, and that's motivating too, when, when it's working and when Absolutely. it's not working, then we're going to change our mind and come up with a new plan. I'm not going to keep doing that. That's great feedback. Just, just the way with CrossFit, we're data driven, right? Like we, we like to see our numbers improving and know that, that what we're doing is actually working. Um, that's great. What would you like to see for, you know, our primary care system moving forward? How do you think, um, what would be the ideal setup for that? 
It's a big know. question. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's very easy for me usually to complain about all the things that are wrong that, that I don't like. Uh, but then it's very difficult to say, how are we going to fix it and make it better? Uh, cer certainly, I think the idea that we're moving to with some of this, uh, I, I guess, these sort of quality payments where we're getting paid a little more for outcome, like for, for making people healthy, mm -hmm. so sort of how, how I am right now. I'm not necessarily dependent on a fee per every visit. So I don't have to make people come in for everything. I'm just trying to make you healthier. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that sort of is a good idea. It's just difficult because how do you track it? How do you monitor it? And if we aren't careful, we're going to get bogged down with the staring into the computer and the clicking all the boxes. And then, then when the people come into the exam room, all they see is the back of my head staring at the computer. And that, that is not what we want. No. You know? So yeah. And, and, and I do think we need to do something for, for us, the physicians, so we aren't burned out and, and we should be leading by example. Mm -hmm. How am I going to come in the room and lecture you to go exercise when I'm not doing that? Right. Or, or tell you not to eat these things when I'm, I'm eating a box of donuts while I'm telling you not to do that. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, it, it would be pretty neat. I, I would love if I could have my practice in a CrossFit box. Mm -hmm. I could work in a t-shirt yeah. and and you can come see me and we'll, we'll take care of the medical problems. And then I can walk through the door and show you how to do some exercise or, yeah. or have, you know, a couple of diet talks. It'd be great too, if the CrossFit box has a little kitchen in it. So once a week we can, we can have a little cooking class and we'll talk yeah. about how to make your food and just all kind of one stop. Absolutely. I don't Absolutely. know how to make that work with payments. Uh, There's gotta be a way. <laughs> There's gotta be a way. Yeah. No, I totally Someone agree. smarter than me is going to put those dots together. Totally. Totally. I love it. Well, I want to wrap up with three questions that I ask everyone at the end of the podcast. So the first of those is what are the three things that you do on a regular basis that have the biggest positive impact on your health? Yeah. I heard those three questions on your previous <laughs> podcast and I still don't know. So the, Number one is the easy answer. It, it's the CrossFit, so, yeah. which specifically, uh, I guess, if we're going to narrow it down, it's, it's the exercise. So I'm more regular about the exercise now. Mm -hmm. There's more variety in my exercise now. Uh, and, and I think that's a big thing for me. I have lost a little on my endurance side. So my, my 10K time, my marathon time is definitely slower than it was. Mm -hmm but I think I'm more balanced now. Right. So when I was running a marathon or, or doing an Ironman, I wasn't doing power cleans. Right. I had never done a squat clean. I didn't, I didn't know what <laughs> these things were. I definitely wasn't doing a muscle up. Uh, so, so I feel like I'm more balanced now and, and that, yeah, I feel better every day yeah. when I wake up. I've and that's a beautiful problems. example of that the CrossFit model and that being, you know, we're trading off. We're not going to be experts in any one area, but we have balance. And like you said, like your, your mom, you can run, maybe not as fast as you could run if you were only running, but you can run and you can also yeah. jump on a box or do a power clean or these other functional movements that are going to serve you well in life. And it transfers. I mean, without training, I talked to my, a few other guys at my gym, we, we did an ultra marathon as, as a relay team. So we did a 134 mile run. Ooh, wow. And our, our training was to go to CrossFit class <laughs> and, and very little outside running. We just went yeah. to our one hour classes and then we woke up and did a 22 That's hour, 130 something mile run. So, so anyway, the, the fitness is one. Uh, the, the second one, it's not perfect, but I, I think the change that I've been trying to do more lately as far as from my nutrition side, which it's I've, I've been trying to eat more vegetables in my diet. Mm. Uh, so I, I keep reading more about that. So I'm, I didn't have a problem getting the meat in my diet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I just was, and I, and I eat a fair amount of fruit, uh, but probably a little more fruit than I should and probably not enough vegetables and, and the fiber. So I've been trying to add more veggies in my diet. So, I, so I think that's helping me. I will know for sure when I run my lab. <laughs> that's great. Um, and, and then I guess the other thing that I do, I, I just try not to stress too much. 
I don't have a good way to explain that to people, mm -hmm. but uh, things that other people worry about, I, I, like I can't fix that. I'm not going to worry about it mm -hmm. and just try to let it go. That's a great attitude to have. And certainly I'm sure has an impact on your health. Um, oh, go ahead. I'll just say less stress is definitely better. <laughs> yeah. What's uh, one thing that you have a hard time implementing or something you're working on that you think would impact your health positively? So, so that would fall under recovery. Mm, okay. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I'm doing, doing better with the recovery from the exercise. So I'm, I'm not going all out for every workout every day. Okay. I'm, I'm allowing myself to have some either total rest days or maybe just walk the dog days. Mm -hmm. but that's better. But the sleep could use some work. Uh, I definitely <laughs> am sleep deprived and should probably sleep more. I actually ordered one of those uh, devices to tell me about my recovery, but it's a 14 week back order. So oh boy, when it comes in, maybe I'll work on my recovery. Yeah. When you see those numbers and it'll, it'll help you uh, kind of motivate the behavior change. It yeah. can be a powerful tool. Hopefully I'll fix it. So I need help. <laughs> I would say that's probably one of the most common answers I hear though, from someone who's doing CrossFit is the sleep and recovery. Well, and, and the, so the combination to them with, with my work. So, so all my patients have my cell number. So if they need to call me in the middle of the night, we, we do. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's fine. But then, so on any given night, I may or may not be up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'll, that'll definitely interrupt your sleep. How about, um, what does a healthy life look like to you? So for that, I, I guess it would be the, the balance of all of these healthy things, but not to the exclusion of living a little, mm -hmm. right? So, so I'm sure I'm going to eat healthy and I'm going to have fun, but I mean, I might occasionally want to eat some chocolate cake. So, mm -hmm. so I do, and, and I'm not, my balance is probably off. I'm probably having too much chocolate right now. <laughs> Around the holidays, it's a little. It's so yeah, so a healthy balance would be great. Yeah, how, how mm -hmm. much this, yeah, especially in South Louisiana, I mean, even, even when we aren't eating the sweets, I mean, gumbo and boudin <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna taste real good and, yeah. and then the same thing with my exercise I, I love my exercise I want to go do it but I have to keep it in balance and not overdo it and get injured or live my life at the gym and, and not see the family mm -hmm. uh, now if the family comes to the gym with me then that, that's like sure. bonus, bonus. <laughs> uh, then, then we're getting it all in uh, but yeah I think that's that's where you want to be is finding that sweet spot you can get everything balanced, work, life. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can spend all of your time doing these healthy things like being in the gym and meditating and recovering and all that stuff. But if you're not really enjoying your life, then what's the point, right? And, and I would suspect a lot of physicians fall into the overwork and uh, neglect the balance. Sure. Sure. Although I think maybe the younger generation might do better than the older generation. I hope so. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Well, any parting thoughts for us before we um, wrap up here today? I just think uh, yeah, get just bring more people to the gym. Bring yeah. a friend, right? Bring a friend. Yeah. Especially the friend who thinks that they can't. Yeah. That, that's that's my favorite thing is the people who who think they can't or think they couldn't do it, and mm -hmm. we get them there and they find out. Look, we're we're working out together. Absolutely. Yeah. And you never know the ripples it will have, right? Like your, was it your son who first went or you said one of your kids? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just by, by him, you know, him and the other, the guy that you met um, that got you to go now, look at all the people you've, right. you've yeah. brought in and that you've influenced positively. So yeah. it all, then each of those can bring more people and it ripples. Right. So yeah, they, they talked me into it. Now I'm coaching a class and, and <laughs> hopefully helping some people have a healthier lifestyle long run. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's it, awesome. So yeah, I didn't think of that downstream. That's right. That's right. Awesome. Well, this was so great, Jeff. I really appreciate it and look forward to hearing more about what you do with, with your uh, program, your athletes and how other gyms might be able to implement or learn from what you're doing. It was fun. Um, yes. Hopefully I'll have some more numbers soon. Awesome.
Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, please consider subscribing and giving it a five-star rating on iTunes. It really does help to get the word out to more people.